Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about reliable software. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, would you say that creating reliable software in, uh, in <laughs> reliable performance software involved doing the right thing even if it is hard, just like it would be to make a kid eat vegetables that they don't like. Yes, uh, to a certain degree I would say so. Uh, the, there are uh, moments when you work with software developers where you sort of learn where, at least I, I think so, you learn where the weaknesses are of the software developers. Common weaknesses are things such as if you have a if you have a software developer who works too long on a story, they're going to lose motivation. Like you're going to see them drop off steam because committing too long to the same story is usually mentally taxing for a lot of software developers. You also know that if you if you make it possible for them to, you know, push to um, in production without code reviews or like re like having some type of reviewing process or something like that, they're going to start using it. If you give them an escape hatch, they're going to use it. Uh, you also know that most of them are going to slack off when it comes to te helping with testing their coworkers code. They're going to slack off with uh, doing code reviews. They're going to slack off when it comes to writing story specifications. They're going to slack off with, uh, uh, or rather they're go most likely going to complain, yeah, well not always, but they might complain, which happens often, about taking meetings. Uh, they're going to complain about third-party dependencies, which is like the number one complaint usually if you have integrated systems and stuff like that. Uh, and usually the uh, the complaint about legacy code and like all of these sorts of things. So the, this is also very no normal. And so the uh, and of course release fear is also a very normal thing. Like uh, people think that they have too many issues with their systems or like there are things that are not working, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There are all these sorts of things that software developers don't really like and in many cases they don't really feel like doing. Classic one is uh, you ask them to refactor something, uh, usually they don't uh, or like they might do it but uh, most uh, of them don't want to. Well basically this, the the lazy software developer which usually settles in after a little while of working uh, in, in any team, it doesn't take usually all that long, is uh, like they they just want to focus on their code coding their story and getting their code reviewed and then picking up the next story uh, that's sort of what they want to do if you ever try to connect with some software teams you might notice that if you tr send them messages and things like that they might not reply all that readily or like you might not get an answer quickly or so forth it's because they're in their own little bubble and they like their bubble and uh, being uh, being someone who ha has been in that bubble and uh, can get into that bubble still, um, I know more or less uh, how the software developers uh, think uh, when it comes to... I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that I know what each person is thinking, I'm saying that I know how their behavior most often is going to be and I also know how to structure things usually so that you mitigate a lot of those issues. A classic example is if you tell the team that they need to be better at answering in Slack or like helping out or like doing th like uh, replying and so forth and so forth. If you don't have someone who is like extra enthusiastic in the team uh, and it's quote unquote everybody's responsibility then it's nobody's responsibility. As soon as you make it a team thing that everybody should be doing it, it's really down to whether or not someone cares. That's why I always promote to people to have an on-call person, like on a rotation, where basically it is your job to do it. Once, a, like maybe a week, two weeks, whatever it might be, you have someone, you, I think some call it the goalie or something like that, who is responsible for making sure that, um, you know, these sorts of ad hoc, questions and things that come up gets addressed and in a timely manner and that the people have support and so forth. These sorts of systematic and process uh, based solutions they are very important to mitigate a lot of these human 
placeness factors and so forth. And in a sense it is a little bit like uh, getting your kids to eat vegetables or something like that because it's not like, it, well I wouldn't say that there, there is a, in some cases it might be, there might be a reluctance for some software developers but often it's really just down to pure, pure and simple laziness and uh, prioritizing other things as opposed to doing something that is necessary and take it from me guys uh, if you put things on like on the team that are not just coding related like these simple things that they know that they're expected to do which is like pick up a story start working pick up a story start working anything else you basically have to make sure that this, that that's going to happen because you can't be guaranteed that they're going to do that uh, willingly uh, and in many cases you might have to deal with people who have like they're really good at maybe the coding but they basically never code review or they basically like they they, they take forever to do anything else or they're really reluctant or like they don't want to be in meetings etc etc there are all these sorts of uh, predispositions people have for certain tasks within the workflow of the software team and so I recommend to you to set up a few guidelines uh, the way that I usually do it is that um, as I was saying I create a role for a weekly rotation usually where one member of the team has the responsibility of doing the work of the team tech lead once a week and then I define I establish the necessary uh, like uh, documentation and to do's and so forth so that anybody can do the job it can be anything from you know these recurring events to re uh, people requesting access to something etc so it doesn't really matter what it is you are dealing with all the things that are non-coding related during a week. The reason why I do this is because it breeds more accountability and it makes it very direct. It doesn't just open it up to someone is doing it. You are doing it. There's no just sitting by yourself doing nothing and giving like creating a situation where other people are picking up your laziness and slack uh, for 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 you. Like everybody is going to uh, be involved to a certain degree. I mean, it's not like if you're not if people are working on very important things, they can of course defer and ask someone else to do it for them, etc., etc. But the basic idea is that this breeds knowledge sharing and accountability towards the team and the results of the team regardless of that is your story or if it's something that the team has to deal with it creates uh, as I like to say it creates a situation where the core of what is needed in order to run the team smoothly and efficiently is something everybody in the team knows how to do and I say that on a very conscious level in the times that I've been a tech lead and so forth to the developers that uh, the my only expectations uh, are basically that you do the best that you can that I can see that you're committing to your job and you care about the work that you do and like you try to try your best and that you take uh, and you that you feel uh, that you uh, take accountability for the overall success of the team which basically means that that which is shared in other words you don't have to be a front-end developer or a back-end developer when you're one or the other like you don't have to switch roles that's not what we're talking about we're talking about that you should know how they all, all the systems work you should know how we do code reviews how the CI pipeline works how we do deployments all the things that like the rituals and uh, like the daily workings of our team you should know in other words I should not be worried that if there's a new hire that you don't know how to teach them how the t how everything works and how to get access to everything you should know that every single one of us uh, as uh, I've said in other videos uh, in a similar way to how the military works uh, every person who is in a squad ha might have a different you know it might be a medic it might be someone who's dealing with communications explosives except it can be a call kinds of compositions but each and every one of these people should know what the overall mission is they should know how to use a map they should you know how to set up shelter etc etc these are common uh, it's common things that everybody needs to know and that's not gonna come I promise you that's not gonna come by just saying to people that yeah we should all do this 
in equal measures you have to create a system for it and make people accountable otherwise they will fall into a very lethargic and lazy pattern on average so what I want you to take away from this is that to a certain degree I can agree with like creating because like, the thing is there are things that are fun in software and there are things that are not so fun and every person is a little bit different. Some people don't want to write tests, some people don't really like doing code reviews, some people don't like taking meetings etc etc and all of these sorts of things starts to pile up and it becomes very ineffective, inefficient for the for you as a team if you're trying to match everybody all the time towards every single thing that they like doing and so the best the, the my personal opinion on this is to create a baseline of this is the bare minimum of what everybody needs to know in order to answer all the questions related to the daily job how to deploy things how to release like, like all of these sorts of things right and you have to create a system where anybody could be a, who is a software developer in your team can do this and once you get to that point and you have something of accountability, similar to accountability, you don't have to do my thing and like have a rotation. I very warmly recommend it. But when you have something like that, when you basically make it people's jobs, committing them, saying that it is your job to know this thing, not just anybody does it who knows about it. You are doing it. If you don't know how to do it, we will train you to do it and then you will do it. You, you remove a lot of this sort of like laziness I don't really have to do it I'm not so sure about it like these sorts of uh, nothing excuses that a lot of software developers do because all they really want to do on average is to just sit and take up a story work on their code and then let the world kind of slide away and not care about anything else that's not gonna work uh, unfortunately there is a few more things that are you're gonna have to require of them but they're not gonna on average do it by themselves unless they're very ambitious or looking to uh, like like organically be the, uh, are that way so you have to create some borders and some requirements and then make sure that they follow those requirements usually it doesn't take a lot of push uh, to to make that happen when you create a, like a systematic way this in the way that I'm explaining it uh, you might find one or two developers who are sort of reluctant and so forth and so forth and then you do it the same way that uh, I, that you always do it you explain to them why this is important you expect them to do better and like commit to this thing if they don't they can find somewhere else to work have a great day